Hello everyone, welcome to my project wrap up video. The only thing left to do is to wire in the Haltech ECU and start the car. I will keep this short as there isn't much video to show for it. I first need to power the ECU. The Haltech has two power inputs and two grounds. I had the choice of either using the switched or constant battery power wire from the body controller, but I chose switched power because my ECU doesn't need to be on all night. As for the grounds, I match them up with the four engine grounds that came from my harness. For the body controller to know when to supply the switched power, I had to short the ignition switch and MREL control wires. This way, as long as the key is in the accessory position, the ECU is able to get power. I was now able to connect my laptop to the Haltech and load in the tune from Mark. My long-term knock learn and O2 learn tables weren't calibrated yet, which initially let the engine run roughly, but that was smoothed out after I installed the B pipe for the exhaust and drove the car a few miles. I'm going to get the engine running on the most basic inputs to make sure that I have everything set up properly, then proceed with the other sensors one by one. First is the crank and cam position sensors, along with the spark plugs, injectors, and one wire for the fuel pump. These were easy to match up as they were clearly labeled in both the Haltech functions list and the TIS diagrams for the engine. I also needed the wideband sensor and that was simply a positive wire from the old AFR sensor power and an engine ground. The main wideband plug plugs into the back of the Haltech. The cam position sensors needed a quick Google image search to find out which is ground, which is positive, and which is signal. One of these sensors needed a resistor pull up as the Haltech is not used to having two sensors. My engine runs very rough, but at least it runs. I'm still missing the mass airflow sensor, the throttle body, the VVTi solenoids, the coolant temperature sensor, and the knock sensor. There, that's much better. I found out later that the VVTi sensor was supposed to go to 12 volts instead of 5 volts, which, which is why it isn't working here. There is still the radiator fans to hook up, the throttle pedal, tachometer, check engine light, and AC idle up. But now I can drive the car to get a proper exhaust installed. I ended up using the stock exhaust, and although it might seem like the sound would be as low as stock, it actually sounds pretty okay on the engine. The fact is that it's easy for a muffler shop to weld a B-pipe to the rest of the system, so it's worth installing this now as it's available and maybe needed to pass inspection. That's the heat shield I talked about earlier. Got it from a yard and with the extra fiberglass layer on it, it insulates heat well enough that you can stick your hand right on it. Definitely good enough to not melt the battery right in front of it. And here is a quick pull with it. Although it's not a good way to express it, it reached 16 miles per hour in about 4 seconds just to give you an idea. And that's it. I want to say that this project is completed, but as with any project car, there will always be something to modify or fix, whether it's fine tuning my idle RPM or installing coilovers or even vinyl wrapping the car. I will upload a project cost video to show what it would take to fund this project from start to finish. Other than that, I'll try to occasionally post point of view videos and possibly a cam upgrade video in the far future. This has been fun and thank you for following along with this video series. Have a good night.